Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Thanks with me. Shalom. And in today's video, I want to talk about a subject that came up on our channel. Somebody sent me an email. Um, I questioned whether I should bring this up. Um, um, I've been getting um, emails, or I got one email concerning a fellow channel called Rap the News. And like always, now in this now in this particular uh, request, it was a prayer request for something that's going on for Rap the News, and it's part of the reason why I mentioned that this is to pray for their family. Right. Um, um, I don't know his current status now, and while you're watching this video, I don't know his current status or you know what's going on, but I do know that whatever they went through, that family is still in need of prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, because really rough. But anyway, so y'all pray for him. Right. But in the meantime, of course, somebody always got to go in and find out if he's worth praying for. And so they go in and they look for his, look through his channel and find videos and see if he's worthy of our prayer, I guess. Yeah. That's kind of goofy, ain't it? Well, people do that. People do that because they want to... And I'm not saying this particular person did it, but they want to see if uh, he's a good guy. And yeah. if he's, yeah, like you said, worthy of us, you know, yeah. present him before the Father. Um, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. So. But the thing is, we're supposed to pray for the bad guy. We're supposed too. to pray, yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You know, so if, if, if he is a good guy, like I told you, I'm not really familiar with that channel. I've right. maybe only heard probably a half a video, but. No matter who he is, if he is a bad guy, he's actually needs more of our prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, so the way I do it, I pray for the bad guy first. I mean, I pray for him, his good, for his, you know, success in his hands and what he's trying to do. Right. And that's not what's about to happen. Right. You know, you praying that he's going to get closer to the father. That's what's going to be the end result yeah. of your prayer. No matter who he is or what he is or what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Your prayer is going to get him closer, not farther away. Right. So I pray for the bad guy first, then I pray for the good guy, then I pray for the bad guy again. <laughs> yeah, because he needs he needs double prayer, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, so they find this video that he did um, called um, "How Did Jesus Die for Our Sins." I don't know the title of it, but it's something like "How Did Jesus Die for Our Sins." Right. So I so I listened to his video, and he has some very excellent points in there. Um. Um. I can't say that he answered the question, so I kind of want to answer the question in this video. Okay. How did he die for the sins? Um, I started to actually play his video back because he starts off very good as he as he um, shows other people's answer to that question. He goes on to, I guess he, he YouTubed How Did Jesus Die for Our Sins? And he went through video after video pulling out excerpts of people's explanation of how Jesus died for our sins. And the end result is he didn't come up with it. Nobody gave a good answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I asked you, Stacey, how did Jesus die for our sins? Let's see right. what you, 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 you are our designated uh, church lady interpreter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as far as so you can answer from from the church perspective and then you can answer from your own what you understand or both either way. Okay. The question is, how did Jesus die for our sins? Well, I guess I'll start off with. Um, the perspective of the church and I'm not saying that I'm ans answering for every church person um, I'm just going by what I was taught um, and what I learned and I think he's absolutely correct nobody ever gave us an answer no so um, told, what's the answer yeah. you said I don't know how did Jesus yeah. die for our sins from the church perspective I say I don't know from, you don't know okay okay you from, was never taught in church how Jesus how the Messiah died for your sins right we just was told that he went to the cross and he died for our sins okay okay now let me go from my perspective and this is coming from someone who's learning not mm -hmm. not, not completely learned but I go to the third testament where it tells me that if it, and I'm not. This is not word for word, but it does mention that. Good morning, Christian. Come on in. We're having a class. How did Jesus die for your sins? We'll let you answer that question too. Mm -hmm. You the designated smart guy. So if if he died for our sins, the Third Testament mentions, then, and this might not answer the question, if the Messiah went to the cross for our sins, 
did away with our sins, then why are we yet still sinning? Mm -hmm. So, I say that he did not, and I know this is going to be, some big people are going to say, mm -hmm. you probably even say something, mm -hmm. that he did not, it wasn't necessary the act of him dying for our sin. I do believe that it was has something to do with the blood. And I take that from going of the animals being presented as a sacrifice for our iniquity. And I know that it was not necessarily the animal, the flesh in itself. It was the blood. That mm -hmm. was the most important thing. So the answer to your question is... I do not know. Mm -hmm. The answer to your question is I know, do not know, but I do believe that it has something more so to do with the blood than the actual flesh. Okay. Very good. Chris, I'm going to give you a shot. How did the Messiah die for your sins? You first heard that the first day of church, back in Sunday school, that's the first thing they taught you. Jesus died for your sins. Right. How? Chris may actually know the answer, y'all. We go on. Let's go. He might mess this. He might mess my whole class up. Spit it out. We don't care. We'll let you beat it. We'll let you do it. E. He died for our sins by first off when he um basically said, well. It was said or implied that he would take, he would make, his blood would make clean the sins of those that believed. Mm -hmm. And so by dying on the cross, he was taking the blame, taking the blame for the sins of those who would follow him. Mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of like what I heard in church. That it? What you think, Stay? I um I agree. I know it's a lot because we also know that it was it's actually it's actually a sin for a man to actually be put on the on a tree. Well, to, he was a curse. It makes yeah, it's a curse. curse. Yeah, a curse for him to actually be put on the tree. So I know it's a lot going on with it. But my thing is, if he went and died for our sins, did away with our sins. That's two different things. Now that's not okay. the same thing. Okay. All right. I don't know. I don't know. I'm very so interested. So let's think about that. See. Ponder on that for a second. Mm -hmm. Out of all of the experiences you had in and out of church, mm -hmm. reading in and out of the scripture, hearing this and this on the YouTube channel, all this that's going on, you have no idea how you die for your sins. No idea. You I couldn't explain not, it. I could not explain it. If I was sitting there and somebody offered me gifts, I would not be able to explain a logical answer that made sense and I actually believe mm -hmm. why he went why he died for mm -hmm. our sins. And why was it necessary for him to die for our sins? And that's what Rap the News point was. He went through ministry. He he didn't get Christian who just woke up and even got the you know the eye boogers out of his eyes, you know, he just sprung on it. He went to people who was dressed in suits with ties on beside the pulpit who was there in front of an audience with certified degrees in theology giving answers to this question. And either they was flat out lying, making fools out of themselves, or they didn't know it all and couldn't say nothing. I think that that's a great way to do it. If you, you know, I have not watched the video, but the way that you're explaining it to me, I think that that's an excellent Oh, yeah. Way. The only problem with the video is he didn't answer it either. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't give the answer either. So, well, come on, come on, come on, come on. I, I want y'all to think about this for a second, well, how we don't know the don't answer. Know. We don't know. I mean, the whole it's world. It's basically the basis of the Yeah, faith. it's, it's the, the foundation faith. of the Christian faith. faith. And we don't know the answer we to it. We don't know the answer. That's, That's ridiculous. I've never thought about that, but that is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. That's the foundation, crazy. that is the bottom line it's, of why you go to church, you read the Bible, you do what you do, is so Jesus can save you. Right. And you don't know how he did it, or how he does it, or why, when, how, what, who, nothing. You know nothing. Yeah, and if we are saved, 
why are we still sinning in that sense? I know saved has a different you know meaning, but why are we still why are we still sinning if we're saved? Okay. Let me let me go ahead and get into my notes here. I'm sorry you guys uh, can't see this. But but before I do, because you brought up a question earlier, even questioning whether he actually did die for our sins, if you will go ahead and read verse uh, three out of that chapter. Okay, this is first Corinthians fifteen and three. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So he actually did. He actually yeah. did die for our sins. Yeah. For our transgressions. So there's no argument that he died for our sins. Correct. The only question is how. Mm -hmm. How did he do this? Yeah. Okay. Now, so one of the first things you did was you brought up um, atonement. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a quick search for blood and atonement. I can spell some of this stuff. Right. Um, we see uh, in Exodus, it talks about Aaron who used blood to atone mm -hmm. for uh, the sins. Right. Um, we see in Leviticus. Also talking about atonement and blood all over the place. What we're going to find if I went through all of these verses is that you actually have to have the blood of an animal. Uh, you have to have the blood. I'm going to say of an animal. But you have to have the blood of a clean being mm -hmm. to wipe away sins. Right. That's the way it's always done. Yeah. Right. Before the Messiah came, that was the only way. That you anybody had ever heard of of removing a sin was by sacrificing an animal. Mm -hmm. You know, you you go out and you cut his throat, yeah. and that go through all of the process that you can read there in you know, Leviticus, first few chapters of Leviticus, and at the end of the day, you are purified of those sins. Right. Well, let me take you over to the book of Hebrews, right quick. All right. Because over here in Hebrews chapter thirteen. It talks about the blood and the sin, too. If you will, read verse 11. Okay. Okay, this is coming out of Hebrews 13 and 11 says, For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is bought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp, outside of the camp. Yeah. Okay, so this is part of the process of the cleansing away of these sins. Right. So that tells us that it wasn't necessarily the flesh. Look at uh, 24 and 12. Okay. 12 and 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Okay. So now there's a good hint because he's talking about this new covenant. Right. right. That, in fact, is actually the answer. Where's we going to be the answer? Like I said, I'm going to tell you how Jesus died for our sins. Mm -hmm. You know, this is actually going to be... This, I realize it's kind of raggedy. We're kind of throwing this together on the phone, spare the moment without the internet or anything. But this may actually be one of the most important videos that you're going to watch. Okay. Because you're going to learn how the Messiah died for our sins. What yeah. does that mean? I think that's important because you should always have an answer for our faith. Uh, the scripture, you know, scripture tells us that. So you don't look, you don't look like a mockery or, or shame like those uh, preachers look well, you know, that he showed a video of. That's ridiculous. Um, but I never thought of it. It's ridiculous for me as well that you don't have an answer for the things that you believe in. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't you don't really feel that shame, that necessary remorse or shame that you should feel for not being able to answer that question when you realize ain't nobody got the answer to the question. You done gone over here to the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, who is actually a paid professional went to school for this right. has a salary to know this and he can't even tell you mm -hmm. so how is me who just you know read the bible and well, how am i supposed to know if he don't know right mm -hmm. so i believe we understand now and some of us already knew this that somehow his blood the messiah's blood not the blood of the lamb like it used to be or the blood of goats and sheep right. you know, and, it was his blood now that is somehow having an effect on our sin. Mm -hmm. His right. blood is being used mm -hmm. right. to like a 
Continual offering. And that brings me to my next question. How did his blood drop it on the ground 2,000 years ago? How does that, what did that got to do with me doing today? What does that, what, what does that have to do with me sinning today? And while we're, while I, and while, before you answer that, it may have been a rhetorical question. Let me, let me go over, let me show you the definition of sin. That's right. You know, because like we know in, in the church community, they kind of have their own definitions of words. Yeah. Yeah. They literally have their own dic dictionary. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and, and it, it like that. yeah, in the, in their dictionary, blessings don't come from the father at all. They come from the Pope. <laughs> yeah. So they, they define, you know, they define priests. They define a whole lot of different stuff. Well, they've actually defined sin too. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And let me make a co correction that blessings doesn't necessarily have to come from the Pope. According to uh, the way that we would define it, it can come from the loan company or the bank. Yeah, yeah, that's the Protestant version. <laughs> yeah, and and the re the reason why we must talk about this is a lot of times people use this word loosely. Right. Like they'll come in and say, "You oh, you sinning? You a mm -hmm. sinner?" Mm -hmm. Well, to a church person, and I don't mean to pick on anybody. Just right. you know, I yeah, I, I go to church too, mm -hmm. but in a church perspective, when somebody says that you are a sinner, that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Because you actually taught to say that, right? We're all sinners. And, yeah, right? sinners saved by grace. See, sinners sin, as Paul taught, right? Mm -hmm. When you ask, okay, well, what sins are going on, you may get any kind of answer. Yeah, anything that they don't approve of. Exactly. A sin <laughs> is anything they don't like at the moment. Right. At anything, the moment, huh? Their life changed now. Their definition of sin changed. Yeah, too. yeah. If they don't like, if they, if they don't like coffee, mm -hmm. they may think, that caffeine is a drug that is a sin in your life. Right. But let them get a good cup of coffee one day and you, you know, they ain't going to bother you about that sin no more. Or a lot of times if they don't like, you know, you'll see, you know, people say, oh, that's a sin the way she dressed. Yeah. But what is she? I mean, it's just a dress above my knee. I'm sin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got to think, OK, so it used to be a sin if the dress was above your ankle. Right now it's now it's okay to be above your ankle, but if you go above the knee, it's a sin. Yeah, and then in other places, oh no, 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 no. Yeah, the knee is fine. You I, can't even show your uh your feet. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't been in some I didn't been in some churches where the, them old ladies would have been glad if them dresses was right about that knee level. You know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, when you're talking to somebody from a Bible perspective, see, this is not a church channel. Right. This is a Bible channel. Mm -hmm. And when you tell a Bible guy that he's sinning, yeah, it's a different story. Right. Mm -hmm. Because look at the definition of sin over here, Stacey. You taught me this. The Bible defines what sin is. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Okay, this is coming out of 1 John 3. It says, Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. There is the definition of sin. It is the transgression of the law. Right. It, it ain't got nothing to do with the way I dress. Mm -hmm. It ain't got nothing to do with, you know, a bunch of other stuff that you may or may not like about the, what I'm doing. You know, you might look at my raggedy, scraggly old beard over here and say, that's a sin and a shame. But, you know, it's really not, mm -hmm. you know. OK, so now that we have defined sin and we understand that somehow the Messiah's blood is doing away with our sin. The question I'm going to ask again is how does his blood being spilt 2000 years ago affect what I'm doing today? Okay, let me go down here. Let's find it. Let's find it. Let me go back to the judge. No, let's go back to the Ten Commandments. Everybody think they know the Ten Commandments, but you know, a lot of us don't. So let's find one in here. Uh, um, coveting. Let's go down to the last one. Coveting. Thou shalt not covet. So here I am. I don't have a car. I'm riding a bicycle to the store to get sugar. Okay. And here my neighbor just bought a brand new truck. Brand new truck. 2027 truck. I'm a little bit covetous. Right. So according to verse 17 out of Exodus chapter 10, which is the 10th commandment, I have now committed the sin of coveting. Mm -hmm. Okay. How? Did the Messiah's blood being spilt all that many years ago now affect my coveting that I did this morning? 
Now, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug says that you can now sin with impunity. Your sin don't count anymore. You can cover it all you want. Mm -hmm. And which means, okay, well, in that logic, let's back up then. If, if Because some of these other sins you may not say, so I can kill anybody I want because Jesus died on the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, I can commit adultery anytime I want because Jesus died on the cross. Right. I, have, I have no remorse. I have to feel guilty for nothing. Stealing of nothing because he died on the cross. Right. That's true. No, that's true. No. So the question is, how did his dying on the cross those two thousand years ago? How did how did he how did he do away with my sin? And I only pause to let you guys think about the fact that we don't know. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go on. Because the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug's, you know, half cousin or whatever, want to be pastor, he gonna say Evangelist. That we not that we're not punished for our sins at all. Right? Mm -hmm. That we don't get punished. Right. But then grace. when you Grace. The grace. But then when you look in the verses, it says that we are punished. Right. Right? All right. So enough stalling. Um, I'll probably end up doing this video again, add more detail. But let's get into how he actually died for our sins yeah okay so of course you have to have the blood atonement for the sin right. so i've been covenant after this truck all morning i have now put a stain on my spirit that is is sin in my life mm -hmm. right. it's not gonna go away it's just if i stole something i can't say jesus 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 and keep the item that i stole and not worry about it. i can't kill somebody and then turn around and claim the Messiah died for that murder. Mm -hmm. He did not die for that murder. Right. right? right. So the real question comes, how does his blood, because we know it takes his blood mm -hmm. to, to, to atone for the sin. How does his blood atone for the sin when it was spilt 2000 years ago? Mm -hmm. The answer is in Passover. Can't nobody hear that sound you just made. Make it again. <laughs> saying the sound will be wild. Well, yeah. Yeah. The the he he, the Messiah. You remember the story how he changed mm, okay, I'm just water into wine. Yeah. Right? He changed water into wine. That was his first documented miracle where he changed water into wine. Right. Okay? Then later on, that was the beginning of his story. And then at the end of his story, he's now telling us here in, in uh, Matthew uh, something else to do with wine. Go ahead and read right there. The okay. red letters. Matthew 26 and 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Now, he, so he started off changing water into wine, and now he has changed wine into blood. Right. Or right. blood into wine. Right. So you say, how does his blood spilled 2,000 years ago atone for our sins today? Mm -hmm. He has made this connection. He has invented this thing, brand new thing that he brought with him that he calls his new covenant. Now, instead of having to go out here and get me a lamb, slit his throat for covenant after that F-150, I now have the option of partaking in the in his blood through the feast of Passover, through this communion ceremony that he's talking about here. Okay. It's like every time you do Passover, it makes a connection to all the way back then. Okay. To, to back then. Mm -hmm. You his blood is on you. But hold up. Baptism does a similar thing, right? It mm -hmm. kind of it's not really the blood part of it. But it's kind of what you do first. You think about it like this. You go through, you, you okay, you start off, quote, as a sinner. Then you get baptized. And all everything that you have done previous to that is gone. It's a clean slate. This is something that the Messiah invented. Before then, you can't wash away no sin with water. Mm -hmm. You have to have blood. This is something that was brand new, never heard of before. You can now use the communion wine to cleanse away your sins. Mm -hmm. So you think about this. Every every day I have the opportunity to commit a sin. Right. 
Even if it's as simple as looking at that F-150 ride down the truck, down the road, I just did something wrong. Right. right. You know, especially you maybe have to do a little bit more, more than just looking at it. Got to right. think on it a little bit. But if that little simple act has put a stain on my spirit, which actually makes me a sinner. And like I said, to somebody like me, that's fighting words. Mm -hmm. yeah? But now I don't have to live with this sin forever. I don't have to go get me a bull and kill it. I just have to partake in the communion ceremony. Passover. Passover. Right. And his every year, he his his blood through this wine is purifying me again. So how did the Messiah die for our sins? He used his blood to replace the blood of the sacrificial lamb and then change that blood into wine that we can now drink and partake in every year and cleanse those sins away as if we're taking an eternal bath, a spiritual bath every single year. So what what so you're saying so I'm trying to to help me understand it. You're saying that of course he didn't the blood that was done with them um, sacrificing the animal is now being replaced with the wine, which is of the new covenant. And now the wine that we partake in on the Feast of Passover allows us to be cleansed of the transgression of the law. Absolutely. That's, so the yeah. answer would be by doing Passover. Passover. He instituted Passover. That Passover is the new covenant. That's right. the new covenant. It right. changed. And before you had to have bulls and goats. Now you got Passover. Mm -hmm. Now you have the wine to cleanse you of your sin. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you're right. The answer to the question is, how did he die for your sin? Passover. By instituting um, the new covenant in but Passover. This, this takes you back to the original Thing. I don't want to say the original question. The question was, you know, how did he die for our sins? But then the second question is, how do we not know this? It's because we as Catholics and Protestants do not keep Passover. So like we were saying earlier, not only do we not know the fundamental principle of why we are serving him in the first place, we are actively rejecting it by saying we don't do Passover. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You you are rejecting you, the, the salvation. The the basis of your religion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just start making up other stuff saying, you know what? We just ain't got no sin no more. Yeah. yeah it's like building without a foundation. Yeah, you building, yeah, you you yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you ain't got no foundation, all it's going to take is a little bit of shaking mm -hmm. and your whole mess going to fall apart. Well, we know that that shaking is a coming. Mm -hmm. And this brings me to my last point, And that is the 144,000. Okay. Those people who are supposed to save humanity because they get into these principles and get into these understandings and able to come back and teach the rest of us how to do it right. Mm -hmm. Look at right here where it says that they get their ceiling, that ceiling that we hear about in uh, in uh, Revelation chapter seven or something like that. OK, this is coming out of second Ezra two. Mm -hmm. arise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that be sealed. In the feast of the Lord. We get our ceiling at the feast. Yeah. When you go in and you look at the Septuagint translation of, and I don't have it to show you right here, the Septuagint translation of the um, book of, I believe it's Jeremiah chapter 38. If you've seen my other videos, you know what I'm talking about. It says the feast of Passover. Mm. He's gathering them to the feast of Passover. So think about this. Mm -hmm. You have all of these individuals who have all these sins and stains on their spirits, which, which would otherwise create a chasm between us and the father. Mm -hmm. Of course, the father never moves, but our sin drives us away from him to where we can't hear, feel or anything. We don't we don't we can't even recognize his presence because we're so far away from him. Mm -hmm. Well, be, that sin is what's keeping us separated. We understand that we can s remove that sin through Passover as if we're taking a spiritual bath. So what he's telling us here is that his people who will grasp this will be those who will be cleansed and they will be sealed at Passover. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I said, this may be the most important video you watch in your life. It's very important because my mind is, keeps going back to the first Passover and how the Father, all of this was implemented back then. Yeah. And I can just see the trail yeah. to exactly now. Yeah. How, why we just think it was just a lamb being killed and the Father giving them all those instructions. It was so much more. Because now it leads us down to the road to where we're at now. Mm -hmm. And that's amazing. But with that, I guess I'm going to close it out. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. And with that, we will say shalom. Shalom. shalom.